Hi everyone, happy Monday. Thank you for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. Uh, it's a time here where we relax and craft. I'm here for about an hour or so, and we work on a project through the beginning, through the end, uh, over a period of time, over uh, several uh, days, weeks, months. <laughs> this is a, one of the months one. Uh, we're working on the Charming Chevrons Quilt by Krista Watson of Krista Quilts. There's details in the post here if you want to join us for that. Uh, we are working on the back. So I have the back of the quilt laid out here. I did the back completely out of scraps from the front, which is just kind of fun. We used up all the scraps from the front. And uh, we have borders. So we sewed borders on uh, Thursday. And now I need to press them and we need to measure them. Uh, we already have, we have the crazy measurement sheet right here. So I know how big to make the sides and the top and the bottom. So we'll cut those. And then I'll also pin the side ones on tonight. So I'm hoping that's kind of a lot, but I'm hoping we can get all of that done tonight. And then tomorrow we will be sewing. And uh, uh, then, uh, the next day after that, I'll have to come back down here so we can pin the, so we can press again and pin the top and the bottom. And then the next day back to sewing. So it'll be a little weird back and forth. So the uh, times might be a little kind of goofy for, for this week, but I'm excited. And uh, oh, I have a few things to share with you guys before we get going. Uh, I got my unicorn, my fish, uh, my fish museum and the circus, uh, unicorn here so look at him isn't he cute it's the thread thread pooping unicorn so uh, this is my thread that i threw in there um you just pull on that and the thread comes out so it's my little little thread pooping unicorn guy he is cute so again this is from deborah from fish museum and circus but he's he's a little bit bigger than the other guys his head is kind of the same size but his body is much bigger um he's so cute isn't he i don't have a name for him yet i think um uh my husband had uh, some ideas but he hasn't told <laughs> them yet to me so if you have any ideas let me know he's cute i like him um and you guys you know how hard it is to get those when she lists them in her etsy shop they're gone within literal seconds so you have to be able to like click 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 and uh, get it all done you have to pay by credit card because if you go through paypal it's going to take too long um so you know i've talked about the drill of this that this is the fourth time i've tried to get one of these unicorns and haven't gotten it and i was so nervous uh the day before that i wouldn't get one because you know etsy would want me to you know oh did you update your credit card and then or like oh did you which address do you want to use or i thought it would ask me a question and one question like that and then you're out of the running because uh they'll they'll just get sucked up so i actually did a test purchase the day before and i got uh this from her too it's this little cute ribbon uh, that says fabric only on it and you're supposed to put it on your your uh, uh, your fabric scissors so no one uses it in your family for paper <laughs> instead of fabric but isn't that funny so I had to do the test purchase uh, and then I was like refreshing the day of and and then got one <laughs> so that's the poor little story of of um, my cute little little fella here but I finally got one so now my collection is perfect i got the th the three guys now so anyway uh back back to this i will get pressing now and uh, uh, we got our measurements and we'll get going on there so i'm gonna scooch around so let me know how y'all are doing tonight i can see the computer down here where i have um i can see your comments and stuff there so tomorrow is also going to be uh, my special penguin and fish sale for my new embroidery kits that are going to be available starting tomorrow. So some of them are available in Joanne stores. They're starting to pop up in those. Uh, not every jo Joanne store, but a, a lot of them. I'm starting to see them come in. And you guys are 
uh, telling me that you're seeing them or they're not there yet. So soon, uh, they're kind of in their, their transition time. But we're going to have them up on our website, penguinandfish.com, tomorrow morning, probably around 7-ish. Uh, I will send an email out, uh, and then you guys can check check the links in the email for for info on that. But I'm going to have a special... Um, couple couple specials in there, so you'll have to check that out tomorrow, and then um, I'll share all the kits with you tomorrow uh, during our scope or our scope our Facebook Live here. Um, I'll open them all up, and then you guys can ask questions on like you know if you want to know what's in them or, or see them. I have um, a couple are a, a little different format than than um, the our, our normal our, our ones that we have now. So I can't wait to share. And thanks so much for all your guys' great suggestions for kits for, for the next uh, round. So it takes about a year for them to um, get into stores from, you know, idea stage. So right now I need ideas for next year's and you guys are giving me just a ton of really good ones. Um, I mentioned a couple in my emails, like for sure I want to do like a garden sampler or something that has like some cute bumblebees and butterflies and hummingbirds and then, you know, cute little garden flowers or plants. Um, you know, I don't know, maybe we throw a little bunny or a little chipmunk in there. Um, just another little bird. I don't know. We'll see. So I like that one a lot. Um, I'd love to do like a fairy tale one with... Uh, unicorns and fairies and that sort of stuff. Uh, some of you guys wanted uh, either mandalas or um, like doilies, like the ones that I did for the Splendid Sampler. So I thought I thought that would be really fun. Kind of those that doily. It's almost the the doily is almost like the mandala, and that would just be like a really fun, peaceful thing to to stitch. I think. So I thought that'd be really fun. That was a great idea. Oh, they're all just great ideas. I kind of want to do one of just like a bunch of different bears. I think that would just be fun too. A couple of you guys requested different bears. And I'm like, I don't have a bear. That seems crazy. So, all right, here's, here's the first one. I'm going to just, how should we do this? I think we'll just lay them out on the ground here. Grab another. I thought it'd be fun to do one of all like marsupials or something because then I could do uh, a kangaroo and a sloth and uh, a koala and like a platypus and I thought all those would be kind of cute together but we'll see. The garden one for sure I want to do and the mandalas or doilies. I for sure want to do those two because I have a, a lot of ideas for those ones right off the bat. So I'm stoked. I'm ready to get drawing again for that. And I think this time around, I think I will show you guys some sketches in, in my newsletter and stuff. So um, just to like share so you guys can see a little bit more of the process. And if you think I'm missing something, like, oh, it'd be cute to have a ladybug in there or something too, um, then, then you guys can let me know. You know, I did a pattern, a fabric collection that never got made um, of, of bugs, and I thought those were pretty cute. Those would be fun to do as, as, a, as a kit, like a praying mantis and spiders and all that. That'd be kind of fun. Um, sorry, Miss Lucas, last couple bites. Been, oh, under the weather. Oh, that's a bummer, Sue. Um, scrim, what does it have to do with batting? Okay, scrim. So let me know if I'm wrong on this, but that's kind of like a coating that they put on it to kind of hold all the fibers together. Does that does that sound right? For some reason, that's what it is in my head. When when a um, batting says that it has a scrim, I think it's usually yeah, it's like a it can be a physical something that holds. Uh, the layers 
of the batting together, or it can be a, like a chemical that holds layers together. I think it's, it can be either either way. So a lot of times, um, like my one that I got, the 100% the cotton with no scrim, how that's held together is by needle punching it. So kind of like how, remember when we did needle punch on the unicorn stuffed animal where I brought all my needle punch stuff out and you just punch that needle through the wool and it starts holding it together. It's that same theory um, with this natural cotton. So you have the natural fibers and then they're just like scrunching these uh, needles into it, probably something like that. And that's um, what's holding it together. So that's, that's the kind I have. I have, mine does not have scrim, um, which I don't know. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but in my brain it's like, okay, then I don't, it doesn't have like chemicals holding it together. It's just more natural, so I felt good about that. Um, don't use scrim for something that goes in the microwave. Ooh, that's good to know, Amy. Oh, sp speaking of batting, we're getting awfully close to sandwiching the quilt together here. So uh, starting tomorrow, this was a good suggestion that, that one of you guys had. Um, since I don't have a lot of places to lay out the batting, I'd like to start laying out the batting because you want to ideally have it rest for a few days so the folds kind of come out of it. Here's our second one. So I, I want those folds to relax. So this was um, someone's suggestion here. Um, since I don't have space to just lay it out, uh, I could lay it out on the bed. Like after we get up in the morning, um, I can get the batting and lay it out on the bed and then it can just lay out there for the for the day and then I can fold it up and put it somewhere um, while we sleep and then just lay it out again the next day. So I'm like, perfect, that's a plenty of space. Uh, that's my gonna be my batting relaxation <laughs> space. So I am gonna start doing that uh, tomorrow. I better put it, I better bring it upstairs so I remember. Um, but yeah, because I want to have that relax a little, which I've never actually done before, so I'm trying to do something right. Oh, maybe roll it loosely instead of fold it. Yeah, um, when I'm when I'm done for it for the, or like when I need to set it aside in, at night. Um, yeah, maybe I'll just roll it up and put it at the front of the bed. Oh, you imagine your kitties laying in the middle of the bedding. Oh gosh, yeah, on the bed all day. <laughs> So I suppose that's one benefit of not having um, any animals. I can just leave out a big roll of batting and I won't get, get animal in it. For future kids, you could consider, oh, Native American, um, African, or a jungle motif. Uh, that'd be really interesting. Yeah, all that, all that makes for like great quilts and everything. I love the suggestions. But yeah, I'm making like a running list of all of them and, and uh, some really fit together well. Like some animals, like, uh, you know, a couple garden animals together. You know, someone mentioned bees and another uh, few people mentioned hummingbirds and I'm like, those would play well together in a design. So I don't know, I always like starting with ideas like that. And uh, then I just start sketching and, and um, you know, right now in theory, it's a bunch of little guys together in a pattern. But once I start going, it might end up being something else. Like it might be, you know, like the, um, the two birds with the, the, uh, the drinks for two pattern. Um, with the two birds and the little cup of tea or coffee, you know, it might end up being something like that instead. We'll see. Or it might be like, uh, uh, you know, some cut garden vegetables with some little animals around. It'll just be kind of fun, um, fun to see what happens. You know, you have your ideas, but then once you start drawing, more ideas come and it's like brainstorming, but, you know, not with words. It's like brainstorming um, through images instead, kind of. So uh, I'm excited for, for that and I'll share some of that process with you guys as well. 
Ooh, veggie themes, kitchen themes. That's a great idea. Yeah, kitchen stuff. That seems like, um, man, I would love some kitchen kitchen stuff. I, I did some food patterns for this craft textbook. Maybe I could expand on those a little bit, like some cute carrots and uh, turnips and stuff with a few little animals. That'd be kind of fun. But yeah, so I'm stoked about that. And um, yeah, so tomorrow you'll get to see the uh, rest of the kits that I did for this year's around. So we're talking about next year's kits. Um, I just got done with this year's kits are just um, making it to Joann's and they'll be on my website tomorrow morning. Um, so there'll be six new kits this time around. Okay, we have one more to press. So I think my strategy for cutting this, uh, these are all two pieces of fabric with, uh, that I've seamed together. I think I might refold them on the seam and measure, you know, measure the length from, you know, the, the seam, not the end, but from the seam. Cause you know, when we unfold it, we can't count the, the seam allowance. So I think I just might measure there to whatever length we need. Ah, do I want to do it that way? Because if I do that, then the seams will be in the center of all of them, and I'll have these weird chunks of fabric at the end. Versus I could just measure, lay them out flat and measure the distance, and then they wouldn't all be in the center. They would be like off center, and then I'd have bigger chunks of fabric when I'm done like maybe even big enough to do a binding out of or something. So I'm wondering if maybe that's the way to go instead. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Oh, you saw the craft textbook uh, in a shop in Fredericksburg, Texas. Oh, you left it open to my project. Oh, Jenna, that's sweet. <laughs> that's cute. Oh, you love the videos, especially the puppies. Oh, you're so doing in the puppies. Yep, so I, in the past, uh, last like four days or so, I did a couple videos. Uh, I hope you guys saw those. Uh, tomorrow I'll put links in this post to uh, the videos that I've done. Um, just lately, I did two little videos. Sorry about the one. I know it, it, it's a little dizzying to watch, but... I didn't really realize that till I was done and uh, thought, okay, well, that's what it's gonna be. <laughs> it's the, the last one I did was uh, three different ways that you could stitch the same design and just completely different ways. And it's like super speed time because I'm kind of showing the whole process. And uh, since the way I embroider is I don't usually use a stand, so I'm holding the, the uh, embroider hoop and rotating it around while I stitch, so it's just the most comfortable. But watching that in like hyper speed was like really jiggly and um, you know, so if you got a little seasick, <laughs> I apologize for that. But I think that the idea was there yet and I think for those videos, uh, I think I'm gonna start doing them on a stand. Um, just so it's a little bit better for you guys. Cause I want to start doing a lot more videos like that, but yeah, I think I'm going to have to start doing on an embroidery stand so they don't move around quite as much, even though I'm a little bummed about that because I don't want to imply to people that you need a stand for embroidery. You know what I'm saying? So, so I'm a little, I'm a little torn about, about that yet. I suppose I could just edit it differently, but I like the idea of showing the whole process too. So yeah, so Gretchen, there are embroidery stands. I have not found one that I really like. I, I have an idea for one. I almost want to design one and get them produced. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, but I did order one. So it has a little bit of a base and that you can clamp onto a table or you can actually sit on it too, this little base. And then it has like a, a rod that comes up and then it has a hoop uh, that's attached to a clamp. Uh, and, and it's not a hoop that I can remove, which is kind of typical. Um, and the ones that you can attach your own hoop, you can't rotate it. So like with me, I'm always rotating it to the back and then back to the front and to the back to like tuck in the ends and stuff. And it's not, 
the easiest thing on a stand. So I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. But it would probably make the videos a little bit better. You could explain in the text why you're using a stand. Lucy, I think that's a good idea. Um, just say that you don't need one. Yeah, I'm going to have to do something like that. The one where you added the pin back, that felt... Oh, that went too quickly for less experienced sewers. Yeah, so um, what I'd like to do... That one, like, I'd like to just get these, like, ideas across. And then I'd love to have links to the full length video. So like what we're doing here, like, you know, here, we're here for about an hour every, every evening, right? I would love to do these short little videos so you can get it really quickly, get the idea really quick. But if you wanted to, you know, actually make that thing with me, like the pin, for example, um, just real quick, you could get the idea of like, oh yeah, I could put embroidery with felt and make a pin. Um, I like that idea, you know, but if you click this link, then you can watch, like get to a blog post or something where you can watch the full, you know, hour and a half or however long it took me to, to do that, like two hours or something. Then you can sit with me and, you know, um, I could point out things a little bit more. Um, here's how you do the back stitch, the blanket stitch. Uh, so I, so I want that, oper that, um, that option, I think. So in my head, that's kind of what I, what I'd like to do, have the, the quick piece, if it's just a quick idea, um, and then if you want to dig into that idea and do one like it, then you have the opportunity to, for that as well. Yeah, an actual tutorial. Exact, exactly, Paula. So you get the idea real quick, and then you can dig in more, and I'll have the full-length version as well. So, yep, I think, I think that's something that I could do, because I can shoot both at the same time, and... Um, I think that would work. All right, whoop, whoop. we are done ironing here. I'm gonna just move the iron out of the way. Oh, so mass drop got back to me. You know, my iron has that big crack in it. And uh, since mass drop is a place where they, they order in bulk, basically, they can't, I can't just return it and get, get another one because they don't have them because, you know, they buy them together. So I can either... Um, they'll either send me, uh, uh, like 30 bucks or something if I want to keep this one as like an, I, I'm sorry, or I can return this full or what I paid for it, but I, it's, a, I'm trying to figure out what to do because sure, I can return it and get my money back, but that's not enough money to buy a new one. <laughs> so I'm wondering if, um, I should just keep this one. I don't know. But, so that's the deal, um, that's the update on the mass drop stuff. Ooh. Garden, answer fast. Garden, answer, does that wear as fast and then they come out with a more detailed video? Oh, Garden Answer does that. Oh, is that a, is that a YouTube channel, Garden Answer? They, they do a fast video just so you can get the idea of it and then then a more detailed video. Okay, so is that, let me know if that's something, Gretchen, you say you, you like that idea. Yeah, because you know, sometimes what I hate on YouTube is if I just wanna get an idea of something like how to do such and such, I just wanna zip through that and get it. I don't want like the huge introduction, I don't want to sit through an hour long thing, right? So I just want it quick. But if I'm like, dang, that's neat, okay, Yes, I get that they built that shelf and whatever, but now I need to sit down with them step by step. And so there's that opportunity too. Um, so that's, that's kind of what I'm thinking. So we'll see, we'll see how that works. All right, we're scooching, oop. This, this guy closes really easily, so there we go. Flip him up. This is that other one. Um, I, this is the second, <laughs> the second guy that I have here. my second cute ironing board. Okay, now we are to the measuring stage. Here we go. So I got my little diagram that we drew on Thursday. So for the sides, I need two pieces that are 66 inches. 
and uh, for the top and bottom, I need them 82 inches. So we've already done that math. We are gonna presume that we've done it correctly and we will just uh, try cutting these. So, all right. Like I said, I could do, I could lay them out completely flat and measure the 66 inches or I could fold them in half and then measure the 33 inches, which in theory is gonna be way easier. Um, I could really fold it in half again, but I wanna be kind of exact. Um, oh, I hate measuring and cutting these really huge pieces. So let's give it a go, uh, 66 inches. Um, I'm gonna try and do both at the same time. So you know what, let's, we're just gonna scooch right in front here. I think you guys can see. So let's see, push all this back. So what I'm thinking, just to make it easier for me, I think I'm going to just fold it on, refold it on the, the seam. So you can see the seams right there. And then just measure uh, 33 inches from the seam line there. And I might use a tape measure for that too, just to make it easier. Um, and I'll probably layer both on top of each other to the two sides on top of each other at the same time too, just to make it extra quick. I don't know. I just think that's just going to be way faster for me than laying them out completely fat, flat and trying to measure the 66 inches. Uh, I will end up with a couple big like wonky pieces at the end, but I don't know. I'll use the red for something at some point. I was thinking I could have use it for bindings, but if I just have the short pieces, but let's just make it as easy as I can right now. So um, let's see. I think we'll go like this. So I'll go a little back further so you can see what I'm doing here. So I've just uh, put it, laid it flat in half. I'm gonna try and line up the edges as best I can. And this is gonna stretch and move around, so if it's not perfect, it's not gonna be the end of the world. Um, and then I'm gonna just put another one on top of it right away. Because we need the two sides to be the same. They're both 66 inches. So we'll just try and match up these seams and we'll be as careful as we can. And if I'm a quarter inch off, I'm not gonna freak out. I think we won't be a quarter inch off. I think we'll be just fine. Oh my gosh, you guys, it is summer all of a sudden too. It was 83 or 84 outside today. I'm actually kind of sweating in this sweater. We may have to lose the sweater. Okay, 33 inches. And you know what? I am going to use um, my tape measure. So I have put it on a straight rule line here though. So, um, so I know that will generally be kind of straight. Okay, so 33 inches, yep, 66, so 33, and I'm measuring from the seam, not the edge. So 33, I'm gonna scooch it over so it's closer to a um, line on here. There, that's better. Okay, I think we're good. We're gonna cut on this eight inch mark. Okay. 
All right, so that should be our, our two sides. Okay, so here we are. Um, it's going to be just fine, I think. And, uh, yeah, yeah, 84. It's like way, we went for a walk, and it's that, it's that hot breeziness, though. So it was super windy today, and actually rained this morning, and it had that, had that spring rain smell like it was touching grass and dirt and road and it had that just that good smell we had all the windows open today Ugh, it was just the best so all right these are sides i'm gonna put them here we're gonna use those sooner than later and the top and bottom we're gonna cut right away now too uh top and bottom are 82 inches so we need to measure 41 inches. We are just, I don't think we're gonna have any scraps really. We might need more, let's think about that. I think, I think we had like 41 to 42 inch widths. Huh, we might be a little shy on these. Does that make sense? I don't know, that seems odd. It seems like something we would have thought of when we did it, but um, let's, let's give it a go. Hopefully we have enough here, otherwise we're gonna have to come back to these. Uh, yeah, because weren't we supposed to cut like one more? Oh no, eight was enough. So I think this is, we're gonna be just, just right with this, I think. We'll go this way. But that, that uh, 41 inches scares me a little bit. That's kind of a lot. We're gonna just barely hit that, I think. All right, that's the first one. Yep, we're losing, losing the sweater, guys. We have all the windows open yet and it's still just toasty and warm. It's awesome, I love it. We've been waiting for it for ages. Uh, all right, here's the second one. All right. Lining up those seams again. Let's just kitty scratch this flat. I saw two puppies and a kitty on the walk. <laughs> That's the best part of walking around the neighborhood is you get to see all the, the neighbor animals out again. Oh, but we did also have one rabbit uh, jump into our garden today. Our garden that doesn't exist yet, but we have the fence up from the garden yet. And last year they did not figure out, the rabbits did not figure out that they could jump over the fence. And now it looks like one of them figured it out. And that's bad news. Ooh, this is just... Uh, we're gonna flip this around. I don't have enough lines to see. All right, let's see how we do here. 41 inches is what we're going for. Oops. From the seam. Oh, wow. Yeah, we are so, like we have less than a quarter of an inch here to, to work with. Let me just see if I have all the layers. Wow, that's cutting it close. Um, <laughs> so I probably didn't need to cut any of, of 
this off. I'm just giving it a little trim. It's like cutting the selvages off right here. Wow, so there we go. That's it from, from here. All right. So now, um, now I want to pin the sides. Well, okay, so that's what we have chicken wire. We have chicken wire, but it's going only up to like, um, maybe like, like a little over knee height, the chicken wire. And last year that totally worked. We had no bunnies go in there at all. Um, but then this year one um, figured out that if it runs and jumps, it can get over it. Uh, so I ran out there and I think I scared him. He couldn't get off. He couldn't get uh, out on his first jump, but then he ran and then jump, jumped and got out. But man, now we're having to think, oh, do we need to raise it up even higher or do we need to put like a chicken wire top on it? And that we won't do that. That's just beyond. Um, but yeah, so ugh. we'll have to see how that goes. Uh, I don't want them eating all the kale like they did the first year. All right. Um, let's put these to the side. So these are the top and bottom. Don't need these, uh, until, uh, for a couple days. So I'm just going to make sure these are to the side. And uh, now, so I have all my, my wonder clips out here and uh, I want to, uh, put the two sides on. So we are going to just clip down all of the sides and how I'm going to do that. Uh, oh, what's great is that I know the exact center of the borders because we folded it on the seam. So I have the seam for the center. What I'm going to do is fold the quilt in half and then just kind of finger press, just rub on it. Um, so I get a little indent where the halfway point of the sides of the the quilt art. So, and what that will do is I will match up that little point that we make and the seam of the border, and that will be our center most point. So we'll clip that together with the wonder clips. Then we will clip, and by clip I mean pin, We but pin with the wonder clips. We'll pin at the top and the bottom. So uh, we'll know what the center is and the top and the bottom, and then we'll just kind of work our way uh, centering each one and then centering again and centering again until we have enough clips on both sides. Um, because then uh, we can like pull and push a little bit if, if we have to um, make a piece like a little wider or skinnier or something. So that's the, that's the plan. Um, I will do so the tops first. I am sewing the sides first, Gretchen, and then the tops. Uh, because if I sew the tops, um, like if we cut the top smaller, then I'd have, um, you know, these short tops and these really long borders or these really long sides. And I kind of prefer it a little bit more to have the shorter sides and the longer tops because the tops will equal the distance of the sides a little bit. Like visually, it'll, it'll feel um, not so tall. It'll feel um, a little bit better. So, uh, yep, I'm doing these sides first and then the adding that width of the sides, that's our measurement for the top. So, all right, let's get going on this. So first up, let's fold this in half and we'll do one side at a time. So just folding it in half best I can. That looks good. And there, I'm just kind of finger pressing it here so I can uh, see that little, little edge and then we'll unfold it. There we go. So here's the little, little uh, crimp that we put into it. Get this flat again. Try that again. I think that'll do. All right, border one. So right in the center, so that, that was helpful. Right sides together, sucks if you forget that. 
it's a bummer when you pin a whole border on and then you realize you didn't have right sides together. All right, so I'm matching the seam with that point. Let's open this up first. That little crimp that we put in and the seam I'm matching up. All right, now let's go to the end. All this floor stuff is, is my least favorite thing to do, so uh, I need a solution to this at some point. I don't have a table or anything that's big enough to, to do this um, in any other way right now, so that's why I'm still on the floor. All right, now I'm just centering it here. It doesn't look like there's much that I have to ease or move around, so we're pretty good here. I'm just gonna center it one more time and I think, I think that'll be fine. I think I'll put, add one more in here. All right, now down to here. Do the end first. See now here it needs a little bit more stretch it looks like. Or it wants it wants to stretch a little bit more. So we'll add a few more clips here. My mom finished two uh, baby quilt tops this, uh, this past weekend. So we're gonna have to have a whole quilting session sometime again. Hmm. There's a little gap here that I want to address. I think we need one more pin. There, we may have to pull on this a little bit as we sew. Oh, I didn't go right here yet. Yeah, I'm going to put a lot, a lot in here. There's a lot of little seams and it's got it's that um, one of those blocks that we had all that scrappy stuff. So I don't know how that will sew or stretch or anything. So we're just gonna put a few more clips on this side. But there, we're done with that. That wasn't that difficult at all. We have tons of clips left over yet too. So we're gonna scooch onto the other side. There we go. Uh, need the other border here. Okay, same thing. Let's fold it in half first. I know we have it pinned over there, so it's not gonna wanna play nice with us over here. Okay. Center is about right here. Okay. Great. Let's do it. Right sides together. All right. 
Again, we're matching up that seam to that crimp we put in. Do this side first. Then at the top, All right, now this is where we gotta ease a little bit, I think. So we're just gonna grab those two points and just stretch it a little. Clip right in the middle. I put it upside down. Okay. Next up. Just the end to here, and then we'll be done for the evening. And we'll get to sew these nice long seams tomorrow. Man, I feel like I've been staring at this red for so long that it's kind of turning different colors. All right, center that. Okay, so there we are, uh, both sides. So that is uh, all we'll get done tonight. So next up, um, I'm going to bring them over to the sewing machine again, and we will sew those seams. Uh, and I'll show you the kits tomorrow too, because we'll have a, a little bit more time uh, tomorrow. And then on Wednesday, we'll be back on the floor here, um, and I'll get the ironing board out. We'll press these seams open, and uh, just so the whole top is nice and flat again. And then we will pin, we'll clip like what we just did, the top and bottom. And that's what we'll do Wednesday. Thursday, we'll be back to sewing. And then Friday, um, we'll press it and maybe, oh no, Friday is finish it Friday. So Friday is the first uh, first Friday of the month. It'll be the first Friday of May. So we will work on uh, an unfinished project and it's either going to be, I think, my splendid sampler quilt or my jean quilt. One of the two because uh, both of those are just screaming at me a little bit. Ooh, I do actually have some mending to do as well. Um, I have a couple of holes in a linen shirt that I like, so we might do a mending. That, that could be kind of fun too, just mending up a little, a little hole. So I don't know, I'll have to see what we feel like it, but Friday, we'll be finish it Friday. So that means um, Monday, we will probably put the, um, we'll probably sandwich the quilt together on Monday. We'll have to press, 
we'll have to press probably the top and the bottom again just to have it nice and pressed. Uh, but then, yeah, I think we will we'll start pinning it. Dang. So I'm going to have the whole weekend to end the week this week to lay out uh, my batting and let it kind of, you know, get all the get all the folds out of itself. <laughs> so that'll be the plan for that. So awesome, guys. Uh, thanks again for joining me. And uh, be sure to check your emails tomorrow morning, I think at 7 central time, 7 a.m. central time is when I'm hoping the emails will go out. They kind of, they kind of um, get sent out in chunks. Uh, so, uh, oh, Fluffy, is that the, this guy? We'll hold him. We'll hold him and talk. <laughs> but yeah, so tomorrow morning around 7 a.m. Central Time is when the email will go out. And that will have the link to uh, the new kits online. I'm going to have, uh, they'll all be up there individually tomorrow. But then I'm also going to have a special for the bundle of them. So uh, pay attention to that email tomorrow morning. And say goodnight to Mr. Who knows what yet? I don't know. Uh, we'll have to think of names tomorrow. We'll see if John comes up with something, and then then um, we'll we'll see if um, if it sticks. <laughs> so, all right, guys, have a great evening, and I will catch you tomorrow night. And I'll get this up on YouTube at Penguin Fish Movies. Uh, have a great evening. Good night. <laughs>